today we're gonna learn how to make a flat and boring photo super interesting and dramatic in Lightroom. So without any further ado, let's get started. So here we are in Lightroom and this is the photo that I took in St. Augustine and probably it was the Bridge of Lions. A big shout out to Nancy Flynn for taking me there. Thank you so very much Nancy, it's a beautiful place. As you can see from the shot, it's broad daylight, middle of the day, the lights are not interesting enough so we need to work on it to make it dramatic. First of all, since the lights are not interesting, let's turn it black and white. Let's click on black and white. Just make sure that you're in the develop module in Lightroom. Once you have selected your picture, just go to black and white, right? The colors are not important at all at this point. Now, first of all, play with the white balance because the white balance also affects the exposure. Again, if you're taking the artist's approach, there is no order of moving sliders. If you look at the image and go, hey, this image has a lot of highlights. Let's take down the highlights. Maybe this image has brilliant colors, but the saturation is missing. So before doing anything, you would play with the saturation. There is no order in which the sliders need to be moved. You can choose any one you like. That is the artist's approach. So in this case, I probably will play with white balance first because that affects the exposure. I think the original was fine. Let's double click on temperature to set it back to normal. Now let's scroll down and zoom in one is to one. Okay. Now. I want the details and the highlights, but at the same time, I want contrast. So let's take down the highlights to get the most details. See, now we will take up the whites to expand the dynamic range. So hold the Alt or Option, then increase the whites. As you do, at this point, we see there are some artifacts, which means that these areas are losing details. So we're going to stop right there at 52. That's fine. If, even if you lose a little bit of details, it's okay. You are the artist, you're allowed to do that. Fit. Okay, now let's take down the blacks, hold the Alt or Option again, and take it to the left. These artifacts are just for reference. Even if you lose details, it's okay. All right, this is fine for us. We will add shadows because we want to add dimension to it. So let's take down the shadows. Wonderful. Now, let's increase the clarity just a bit. Not so much, just a bit. Okay. Don't look at the sky, we're going to make it black anyway. Let's go to the tone curve. Now, you might be wondering when I open the tone curve, the basic tab closed. How? Because I've made it that way. Just right click here and if you choose solo mode, it makes it so much clearer for you. Otherwise, it is a mess for me personally. If I check off the solo mode, this is the thing by default. If I open up the basic, I will have to scroll down to tone curve and you open every tab and it becomes such a mess. What I do is I right click and I choose solo mode, which means at a time, only one tab will open. If you open the other tab, the previous tabs would be closed. So when I open the tone curve, the black and white is closed. All right. So with the tone curve, make sure you have selected this. By default, this is this curve with all the sliders. You would click on this and then with the help of this tool, just click on in here. And first of all, let's zoom in. Once you have selected a tool, when you click on it, it's going to apply the two. It's not going to zoom in. For those cases, hold the space bar, click to zoom. Okay. So I want to make this area brighter. So click and drag it up just like that. And let's, let's make it a little brighter. And it has added some extra point. Let's go back to it. Let's go back to normal. And again, use the tool. And I want to drag it a little up just like that. And I want to drag it down and make this darker. Looks wonderful. Keep it at that. It's wonderful. I think I'm going to play with it a little bit. Not so bright. All right. This looks great. Now let's play with black and white. Now this is the key to amazing black and white conversions. All right. So let's play with red. Take it all the way to the right. Then take it all the way to the left. Is it doing anything? No. Just double click on the red and put it to normal. Orange. Take it all the way to the right all the way to the left. Is it doing anything? Well, yes. Let's go say one is two, two. All right. Let's have a look at it. It is adding amazing light from the bottom. So let's keep it at that. What about yellow? Whoa. If I take it to the left, it looks bad. But if I take it to the right, have a look at it. Have a look at the light. Green, it probably wouldn't do anything. Aqua, 
let's take it to the left because we're gonna make the sky dark black let's take the blue to the left we're gonna make it black have a look wonderful isn't it that's what we wanted so what about the purple let's take it a little bit to the right and magenta let's play with it it's not doing anything doesn't matter if you take purple to the left it's looking great as well what about right it's looking great but the sky is also shining so we're gonna make it to the left a little bit it looks wonderful at this point we have done most of it we can add sharpening too as well so let's zoom in one is to one and whenever you're adding sharpening always zoom in one is to one okay so let's go to the details panel and then let's increase the amount to probably 100 now here's a great tip whenever you're working with color images you can hold the alt or option and play with the amount what it actually does is that it takes away the color and lets you see the noise but it's already black and white so you cannot see it here let me just show that to you if i go to the basic turn that back to color and if i come back to the detail and if i hold the alt or option see it goes black and white right so again let's go back to the basic and change back to black and white just wanted to show you that let's go back to the details okay so let's keep it 89 is fine hold the alt or option again and play with the radius decrease the radius all the way to 0 0.5 now increase it keep on increasing it just when you begin to see the halo effect stop so I think for this image it would be 1.0 is fine now let's play with the details hold the alt or option don't increase the details so much that you have noise everywhere so let's zoom in 300 percent and that would be three is to one that way you would see the noise better so details too much shows the noise this is okay a little bit of noise does look nice okay masking there are some areas where you don't want to add the noise so hold the alt or option increase it make sure the sky is out of noise all right 32 is fine. Now, when you hold the alter option and increase the mask, white are the areas where it does add sharpening, black are the areas where it doesn't add sharpening. So we don't want to sharpen the skies. 28 is fine for this example. Now, we don't need any noise reduction. Now, the magic is in the adjustment brushes. So let's choose the adjustment brush and let's play with this thing. First of all, let's do a little bit of dodging and burning, aka brightening and darkening. So dodging and burning allows us to add more dimension to an image by brightening and darkening certain areas. So simply take up the adjustment brush, double click on the effects to bring every slider to zero, and you can increase the exposure to a crazy number just like that, probably four, and zoom in one is to one. Now let's brighten some areas, make the brush a little bigger. You can control the size from here. Here's the size. You can also use the mouse scroll to play with the size. Just scroll up to increase the size, scroll down to decrease the size. And then you can also do the same with the tablet, just assign the functions of scroll. Okay, so I'm gonna make the brush a little smaller like that. And then just start tapping into areas where you want to add a little brightness probably these would be areas which are in the direction of light maybe a little bit there now you can hold the space bar to move into different areas of the image once zoomed in make it a little bigger add a tinge over here make the brush a little smaller maybe you want to add a little brightness here no it was already very bright Make the brush a little smaller and maybe we'll add a little bit of brightness here. Maybe here as well. Okay. Now at this point it's too bright. Just don't worry about it. We're going to decrease the amount soon. It was not required there. But let's just add it. Okay. How about we add a big blob over here. All right, it looks all right to me. Now let's zoom out. You can hold the space bar and click on it to zoom out again. And then let's just simply decrease the amount. So let's go to exposure, let's decrease it and slowly and gradually increase it to the amount that you like. I think it's kind of too much for this area. Just focus on the line at this point. Now, wherever you increase the exposure, let's just zoom in 
one is to one or let's go one is to two so that you can see more of it and let's increase the clarity in just those areas where we increased exposure and maybe take down the shadows now these areas are very much brightened so I'm gonna take the brush and erase it from those areas how do we erase it hold the option it turns it into minus and then you can simply erase it from those areas easy right let's zoom out and it's time for us to add some darkness to it so click on new don't just decrease the exposure and start painting again it's the same brush okay and by the way if you cannot see the brush points probably it's hidden you can press H to show them here's the brush point point. and if you want to see which areas you have painted you can press O and red are the areas you have painted alright press O again to hide them click on new this gives you a new brush this time take the exposure all the way to the left make the brush a little smaller like that and zoom in one is to one and start painting to add dimension to it all right at this point you might think it's too much and yes it is too much now let's bring the exposure up a little now take this down a bit it looks interesting now you can also increase the clarity to make it look interesting even more let's zoom in I'm gonna paint in a couple areas more so if I turn off the brush let's have a look with and without the brush so here's without the brush here's with all the brushes so I think if I delete the bright brush what happens let's see here's before here's after with just the dark brush and the white brush probably wasn't necessary let's let's get it back and see so I'm gonna get the white brush back there are a couple areas where we didn't want to paint so let's go back to the white brush and hold the alt or option and I'm gonna paint in areas where I didn't need the brightness all right and if I turn this off and on let's see it looks all very beautiful again if I try to delete it the bright brush was that needed let's get it back it was probably not needed here so I'm gonna just hold the alt or option and probably paint in here and probably here a little bit and it looks wonderful now let's add one more dark brush so I'm gonna click on new and this time I'm gonna take the exposure all the way to negative minus four and make the brush a little bigger and then paint on a couple areas like this to get it totally black you want the background to be totally black all right and paint around the line you want the background totally black just like that and have a look it is interesting isn't it now if you want to erase it from this area hold the alt or option and probably get some areas back here all right looks totally wonderful let's have a look at the before and after so this is the before very boring and this is the after there's an area left at the top so we're gonna paint over that area the cloud area and let's just hit F to go into full screen mode and have a look at it whether we need to do anything or not so there's a couple of areas where it's not completely black so we can take care of that very easily by going into basic panel and then just simply taking down the blacks hold the alt or option and just take it down just like that there we go there we go all right now if you have a look at it if you press F it looks totally wonderful probably let's try increasing the whites even more this value is great and we are pretty much done at this point you can also increase the contrast a bit to add more punch to it now I think this area is super dark and we can blame the adjustment brushes for it so we can take the brush and let's select the brush which was black this one so we can just erase this area by holding the option and just erase that area it's it's too dark all right let's zoom out and have a look it's much better now hold the option make the brush a little smaller and just paint on that area it looks wonderful let's choose the bright brush and let's paint a couple areas here as well let's make it a little big all right okay looks fine now if you want to erase it just a touch okay looks totally wonderful now if you want the viewers attention to be focused on this if you look at it Saint Augustine 
Then you might want to take a new brush with the exposure all the way up and then probably add a simple dab here. Not there. Let's make the brush a little bigger here, right? And just you might want to paint there. Okay. As you can see, the focus is over there. At this point, you might want to play with this and play with the clarity. Okay. Looks very interesting. So there we go. There we are ready at this point. If you also want to add a faded effect, you can do that as well. Open up the tone curve and probably add a faded effect just like this. And this totally, totally changes the game. So here's the before and here is the after. So that's how to make a super boring photo completely dramatic in Lightroom. All we did was play with the sliders and the options available. And keep in mind, adjustment brushes are the key. You remember how we used that to make the background completely black? Of course, we used the blue slider in black and white panel and we took it to the left to turn the blue dark and eventually make it black. But there were some areas. We used the brush to make it completely black. We used the adjustment brush to add dimension to the line. Also, when we looked at the picture, we saw that the colors are not interesting at all. So we thought, why not make it black and white? So that's all for this video. I hope this video helped you. And if it did, make sure to give us a like. And also, don't forget to subscribe and not just subscribe. Ring the bell so that you, my friend, don't miss any other future tip, trick or tutorial. Thank you so very much for watching. I would like to take this moment to thank all these nice and amazing people for supporting this channel on Patreon and helping keep Piximperfect free for everybody forever. Thank you so very much for your support. If you want to know more about Patreon, check the links in the description. Thank you for watching. I'll see you guys in my next fun. Till then, stay tuned and make sure that you keep creating.